Good morning. It's great to have you here at Unity to join us on, this is Memorial Day weekend, but for us, it's Broadway Sunday. The music will be fun, and we get to take a journey into the amazing understanding of spiritual power and what it creates. As we take our journey together, I invite you to reach deep within and touch the beauty, the magnificence of the spiritual being that you are.
They say the neon lights are bright on Broadway. <laughs> Welcome to Broadway Sunday. I'm Sheila Gautreau, one of your ministers here. And I would love to have you welcome and appreciate this cast of characters. And pushing them along with their fabulous accompaniment, Fusion. And I want to thank Annie for all the hard work in pulling this together. Great job, Annie. And let us give a, a Broadway Sunday welcome to our friends online. Let's turn to the cameras and say hello. Thanks for being with us. Your presence is always such a pleasure. And if you're ever in the neighborhood, drop in. We'd love to meet you in person. <coughs> welcome to our service. Welcome to Broadway Sunday. And if you are new to Unity, I offer a very, very special welcome. And unity is a positive path for spiritual living. And what this means is that all that we teach and try to live here is the relationship between each of us individually and the God presence within us and sharing that in our lives and in our world to make a difference. Unity is also founded on prayer. It is the cornerstone of the unity movement. And our silent unity people have been praying night and day for over 125 years without ceasing. And in this prayer consciousness created by Myrtle and Charles Fillmore and the silent unity people, there's a profound difference in the way that we pray, and it is called affirmative prayer. We don't beg and plead because we're talking to the God within. And so we speak affirmatively, and we affirm the truth that we already know. Let's have an experience of that affirmative prayer. If you're willing, join me now in our opening prayer statement. Together? There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And let's drink that in. Take it into our very being, holding that truth within. And again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And we take it and we breathe it in even more deeply, letting it fill our hearts and spill over into our lives and into our world, touching every heart that beats. And once more, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. <coughs> and we are so profoundly aligned with this at the depths. that we just allow it to be the catalyst that expresses in our lives each and every moment of each and every day. And for this truth, we are so grateful. Let us say, I am so grateful. Together, I, I am so grateful. grateful. Again, I, I am, am so, so grateful. grateful. And once more, I, I am, am so, so grateful. grateful. And so it is. Amen. Please remain seated and join our cast in the next song.
So with that clarity of vision, let us move into that beautiful experience of prayer. And Barbara, would you share with us a blessing from our heart ministers? Prayer of faith. Beloved presence in whom we live and move and have our being, we call forth your love, wisdom, guidance, and support in renewing, restoring, revitalizing, and re-energizing the faith of your beloved sons and daughters throughout our world today. Renew our faith in the spiritual connection that makes us all one. Restore our faith in your divine plan expressing perfectly right now. Revitalize our faith in the innate goodness of all humanity. Re-energize our faith in the power within us to transform our lives and the world. Dear God, you are our help in every need, and knowing this truth, our faith is strengthened and we journey through our lives with confidence. And so it is. With that deep in faith, as we take that step deeper within, let us let this beautiful call to prayer be a part of that journey to the center of our hearts. May the Lord protect and defend you. May he always shield you from shame. May you come to be in Israel a shining name. May we be like Ruth and like Esther. May we be deserving of praise. Strengthen us, O oh Lord, and keep us in the holy ways. May God bless you and peace fill your life. May God bless you and peace fill your May life. May you feel the Lord's undying care for you. May the Lord protect and defend you. May the Lord preserve you from pain. Favor us, O oh Lord, with happiness and peace. Oh, hear our Sabbath prayer. Oh, Mother, Father, God. as we do take this deeper journey of awareness, as we give this time to growing in our awareness of your presence, of your love, of your care, as we take this time to awaken to our oneness with you. And so we understand that in that deeper journey, a part of that journey is letting go. And so we take a moment and hear, aware of all the thoughts and activities of this morning and the days before this. We gently take all those activities, those things that have filled our mind, and we place them in your care. We gently release and let go. Releasing ourselves from 
that focus of mind into the openness of our hearts. Gently, we let go, surrendering into the presence of your care, of this blessing of life that flows to each of us in each moment, surrendering to your guidance, this wonderful wisdom that guides us every moment, every step along the way. Surrendering to your love. Allowing it to so fill our beings that there is only you. There is only love. with this beautiful love, with our awareness and our openness, comes your peace. And we surrender ourselves to your peace. We allow that beautiful serenity to fill our hearts. And gently from that place of peace, knowing your presence, knowing your love, gently we release ourselves deeply and completely into your stillness, to that place deeper than thought, deeper than feeling, where we simply rest at one with the one. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Peace, be holding that beautiful place of peace. Gently breathing that pure, radiant life in and through our bodies. Aware that in, in this place of infinite potential, we're able to touch this divine presence and let it flow through us as this power of love, this power that heals and uplifts and guides, this power that illumines and blesses, that prospers and brings peace. And so we take this beautiful presence and we send it, first of all, into our bodies, to every cell and system, calling forth our healing, 
their wholeness. We send it to mind and heart for wisdom and understanding. And we radiate this divine love. We send this pure, beautiful love to each one who is dear to us. For a moment, just bring each one into your awareness, seeing them enfolded in this love and light and blessing, whole and strong, wise, centered in the wisdom of who they really are. We let this beautiful love flow across the spiritual community, touching each person, bringing forth their wholeness, their blessing. We let each this divine love flow in and through each one, and we bless every prayer request brought here. We hold each request in that awareness that, beloved one, you are enfolded in divine love, and you are lifted to that which is the highest. breathing that deep love into our hearts. We radiate it and send it out across this communities in which we live, across our nation and across the world, that it might bless all the peoples of the world and call us into peace. And this divine love joins with all who pray with us this day whether in mosque or synagogue, temple or church, whether gathered at home or on the hillside. For in seeking to know you, we are all one. Take that deep breath through your heart. Breathe in this beautiful love and radiate it, sending it to this beautiful earth on which we live that the touch of this love brings balance to all her systems, rain where it is dry, calm where there is storm, blessing to her creatures. And take that deep breath through your heart. Breathe that beautiful love. We send it about the earth that it might touch the heart of every single person in the earth. For beloved presence, you are that love in every heart. And in this love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Please join me. Divine Divine love love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And again. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And once again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world.
its season, everything has its time. Show me a reason and I'll soon show you a rhyme. Cats fit on the windowsill, children fit in the snow. Why do I feel I don't fit in anywhere I go? Rivers belong where they can ramble. Eagles belong where they can fly. I've got to be where my spirit can run free. Gotta find my corner of the sky. Every man has his daydreams. Every man has his goal. People like the way dreams have of sticking to the soul. Thunderclouds have their lightning, nightingales have their song. And don't you see, I want my life to be something more than long. Rivers belong where they can ramble. Eagles belong where they can fly. I've got to be where my spirit can run free. Gotta find my corner of the sky. So many men seem destined to settle for something small. But I won't rest until I know I'll have it all. So don't ask me where I'm going, just listen when I'm gone. And far away you'll hear me singing softly to the dawn. Rivers belong where they can ramble. Eagles belong where they can fly. I've got to be where my spirit can run free. Gotta find my corner of the sky, the sky. cast of characters and our fusion band over there. We are really blessed. Thank you. Okay, my name is Veronica Wolf. Good morning. It is my pleasure to highlight some of the upcoming events here at Unity of Walnut Creek. The Amakua Heart Center is a spiritual-based community dedicated to the growth of love, acceptance, and awakening of our true selves. Amakua Heart Center celebrates their one-year anniversary with a special day dedicated to you. So please come on the first Saturday in June for a day filled with laughter, community, and love as we celebrate. And if you are interested in taking a step toward joining our Unity community as a member, or if you are just interested in learning more about Unity, I invite you to join Reverend Sheila on the second Sunday afternoon in June. You can find out more about these and other events in your bulletin and online. And so now, until you hear that gong, please greet the folks around you. Brethren and sistren, rise up. <laughs> Gather around me, everybody. Gather around me. 
gather round me while I preach some feel a sermon coming on me the topic will be sin and that's what I'm again if you wanna hear my story then settle back just sit tight while I start reviewing the attitude of doing right. You got to act, say, chewate the positive and eat, man ain't the negative, but lash on to the affirmative and don't mess with mystery. To illustrate my last remark, Jonah in the way of Noah in the ark. What did they do? What did they do? Just when everything looks so dark. Man, they said we better act to set to make the positive and evil. Man, ain't the negative and lash on.
never planned just think of lovely things and your heart will fly on wings forever in never I've been there, Annie. <laughs> so in last Sunday, while you were getting that beautiful blessing from Reverend Sheila, I was with a five-year-old princess in the place where there are more princes and in princesses than any place else in the whole planet. <laughs> Disneyland. <laughs> It's enough to make your ears sparkle. <laughs> oh, yes. That, that, the amazing power of imagination. Isn't it, isn't it something? Wow. So today, the, the truth is, in the, this weekend, Memorial Day weekend, we, we touch an experience of, of power. Uh, and one of, the, one of the things that this always brings me to, as, as someone who is very committed to the understanding that it is through nonviolence that the problems that we face before us need to be resolved. Uh, and I look at uh, the people that serve in our armed forces, and I've had, had, had the honor of meeting so many, working with many and with their leaders. And there is there's something that I really want to acknowledge. I feel that we often misunderstand the power that is expressed through force. I believe, because I have known so many people that serve, that the real power there is the power of their love. That they are there because of their love of family because of their love of community, of their country, of each other, the love of ideals and principles, and that it is that power that they bring that makes such a difference. And so I, I honor them and understand that as beings, as spiritual beings, as growing spiritual beings, we are learning about our power. And there's a point at which we move from the power center as a place of consciousness, of this third dimensional consciousness. We move into a greater place. We move into that heart center, that fourth dimensional awareness from which we begin to transform life differently. We have a different experience because we begin to understand and work from this beautiful spiritual power that's within us. I recently had a very beautiful experience of, of learning about that, and I want to I want to share this this with you today. Um, it, it's the experience of a woman, uh, Anastasia Jayette, and Anastasia and I met in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where I was uh, working on writing my book, and she was working on writing her book, and we've stayed in touch ever since. And then I. Then I actually got to read her book. It's called Shattering into Being. It's not out yet or we'd have them in the bookstore. When it's, when it's out soon, uh, we'll share it with you. But what happens is, it is a woman's very clear, honest experience of her journey from being powerless to finding the true power of herself. And I have a feeling we're all on that journey. Fair enough? Now, in unity, we've been consciously addressing that journey for some time. Because our, our founding experience was the experience of Myrtle Fillmore, 
who learned to use her spiritual power to transform her body. Uh, those of you new to unity may not be aware that we're founded out of this healing experience in which Myrtle was in the final months of terminal tuberculosis. And through spiritual awakening, she took and began to connect with this spiritual power and direct it so that the cells of her body became healthy and whole. And she went from a woman powerless over everything, including her body, to one of the great spiritual leaders of our time. So we, we understand that in this, in this growing thing that we're doing, this discovering of ourselves as spiritual beings, part of our journey is to understand the spiritual power, who we really are, because we are each creative beings. This power flows in and through us, and it's that that we use to create our lives. So let me... Let me share with you a little bit about Anastasia's journey. And I know some of you will recognize perhaps why it's so impactful to me. Anastasia was a student at the University of New Mexico. and She lived in Albuquerque. She was married, someone she deeply loved. They had a beautiful marriage and relationship and uh, she was a mother of a young baby, and the baby was that beautiful center of their life. And then her husband's life came to a violent end. And her world changed. And what had been filled with beauty and love was filled with pain and loss. Some of you know that I was a student at the University of New Mexico. Married to a woman I deeply love. Filled with joy at the beautiful little baby that was the delight of our lives. When her life came to a violent end. And my life changed to one of pain and loss. So when I looked at Anastasia's story, there was much in it for me. Now, many of you know the a little bit of that the experience happened. I've shared what I've gained from that. But I've never shared the experience itself because it has always been, to me, far too private for me to do that. One of the great gifts from Anastasia's writing was she shared her experience step by step as she went through it. And so I got a chance to look at something that I understood well and see how clearly and understand how in that experience she stepped into a place of complete powerlessness. She was in a moment where suddenly she was in a hospital dealing with doctors and she was in deep pain and shock which they never bothered to acknowledge as she had to make crucial decisions. With her husband's death, she was connected to a family. Now, Anastasia is an East Coast girl. And she married a northern New Mexico boy. <laughs> 
And there aren't many cultures more different than the East Coast of northern New Mexico. <laughs> and uh, yet, she, she was truly blessed during this time. The, the, her, her husband's family was a, was a wonderful family, and they have a, have a, a, a powerful culture, and in that is a deep love and care for family and for each other. So she was blessed in that, but she was also completely overwhelmed with her own experience of loss. And suddenly in a place where everything that she had knew and depended on in her world had disappeared. When she looked back some years later, she began to understand the journey that she'd been on through that great gift of self-awareness. And it was this tool that she took to begin to take the powerlessness that she experienced and as a result of experiencing, uh, demonstrate. Because she found that she gave her power away easily and unconsciously and made decisions and choices that did not care for her, that did not set for her the, the healthy boundaries that help us to strengthen and grow and meet our own needs as we interact with all the different peoples and energies in our world. And so she began to become conscious using that powerful tool of self-awareness and with brutal honesty, looking at what she felt and the choices that she made in her life. And with that, she began to see she could make different choices. She began to discover this spiritual self and that her choices created. Now, as, as she went through this experience and she began to become conscious, she had to work very hard to take back her power to begin to establish boundaries that, that were wise and healthy, ones that would take her life forward on her purpose. And then she came to a place where she realized that this journey she was on, she could step through a doorway, and in that doorway, find who she was connect with the power and the wisdom of the spiritual being that she is. And that's our journey, isn't it? To find that spiritual being, the purpose, the power with which we walk this earth experience. Let me share with you her words of that discovery. She says, I now know no matter how many times I get lost, angry, frustrated, fall short of my truth, or give away my power. Let me check in. Anybody done any of that? Lost? Angry? Frustrated? Fall short of my truth? We done that one? Or give away my power. Okay, now I know it's everybody's assignment. But I also know some assignments are more difficult for some than others. And this is one that I understand at this point in time is no small challenge to the women on our planet. Acknowledging that, the accomplishment of that is a major spiritual accomplishment. I now know no matter how many times I get lost, angry, frustrated, fall short of my truth, or give away my power, I can always find my way back to who I am. I can always connect to and hear the wisdom of my heart. There's a way back, isn't there? 
this is where we connect with that power and its wisdom. I have within me all the guidance I will ever need, an internal compass that seeks only the highest and best for myself and all living beings. Beautiful understanding and place to grow to. The place where we have accepted the power that is within us. She goes on. I never have to seek to be loved, accepted, guided, safe, or protected outside of what I can directly experience within my own heart. We create, not from without, but from center to circumference, from the center of our being, we create this world we experience. I do not have to give away my power to receive the divine love and spiritual guidance I seek with all my heart is ever present. And that's the truth, not only for her, but for all of us. Because you see, that power, the power of God, the creative power of this universe, the creative power through which each of us creates our universe is within us. The power of God is within me. Join me. The power of God is within me. Again, the power of God is within me. Again, the power of God is within me. It is there we connect with it through this place of spiritual wisdom as that power that same power that Myrtle Fillmore used to to send the message of wholeness into ourselves of the body that same power in its wisdom guides us to create the life that fulfills the purpose of our beings there's a there's a beautiful illustration that comes from the Jesus experience. And what I love about it is his response in the situation of complete powerlessness. Okay, this is, this is where Jesus has been arrested and he's taken before Pilate. And Pilate is, is the Roman governor to decide whether he is crucified or not. And Pilate says, Pilate went into the praetorium and said to Jesus, where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you, and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given you from above. In other words, this soul His soul, your soul, in the choices that it makes, creates its world. His soul had made a decision to offer offer a gift, a transformation of consciousness to humankind. That is what creates not someone else's power. No one has power over you. And what I love is then what Pilate tried to do next was get out of it. So that, uh, consequently, Pilate tried to release him. Okay, here's the guy with all the power. He's trying to, do, trying to release him. He can't. Because it wasn't Pilate's power. It was the power of a soul's commitment to accomplish a purpose. What's your purpose. You have the power to accomplish it beautifully because the power of God is within me. Again, the power of God is within me. Again, 
The power of God is within me. Again, the power of God is within me. It's there. Now, what difference does it make? What do we see in a world when we begin to move from that place of all the power out there? And we love to misplace it. How many of you think the politicians have power? <laughs> Money has power. A lot of us have done that one. Okay, some of us did fame has power. You know, we get to play with it in different ways, and kind of our egos have little unique ways we've done that. Some of them have been fun, and some of them have been a little painful. But we tried it, okay? And what happens is when we perceive ourselves as powerless, we're in fear. And when we're in fear, we have to separate. What Anastasia realized when she looked back in her life was that there were people around her, uh, her husband's family, her own family, loving her, wanting to help, but she had to push them away. She felt so powerless she couldn't find space with herself unless she pushed them away because she was afraid. And so she made, she made up motivations for them that would be negative so she could have an excuse to push them away. Once she stepped into her power, she could look at that and realize, that wasn't so. They were just there to love and support me. But when we see ourselves as powerless, we give our power away. So what happens when we stop separation? What happens when we go through the heart awakening that we are about now as humankind? What happens if instead of separation we go to understanding? What happens when humankind looks at each other, when we look at a person of a different religion, and we don't need to call him terrorist? What happens when we look at somebody in a black body and don't need to call them criminal? What happens when we look at somebody in a brown body and don't need to call them illegal? What happens when we look at somebody who is trans or lesbian or gay and we don't have to call them immoral? What happens when we look at the people who are indigenous and we don't have to call them ignorant? When we look at women and we don't have to see them as property. Yeah. What happens is very simple. We look at someone who's a different religion, and we see a child of God. We look at someone in a black body and see a child of God in a brown body, see a child of God in a white body and see a child of God. When we look and see the beautiful beings that are journeying with us as trans, as gay, as lesbian, if we see these beautiful children of God, when we look at these cultures, these rich, beautiful cultures, and we see children of God, when we look at each other as men, as wisdom, as women, and we see children of God. That's power. It is that power that will change our world. So join me. The power of God is within me. The power of God is within me. The power of God is within me. And you know how to get there through those gorgeous hearts of yours. Go for it. Bless you.
there, David. You really touched something deep inside of me, and I think it was collective, which is what I felt and something we all needed to hear. And it gives me a lot to think about, and, and I hope everyone else too. So thank you. Thank you. Um, we would appreciate if you in the sanctuary would take the connection card from the seat pocket in front of you. Um, and take a moment to fill it out. It is one of those places where you can request prayer support from our very active prayer ministry here at Unity of Walnut Creek, and you can pray for someone or something in your life. In addition, our heart ministers are available after the service in the sanctuary and out on the patio, and you'll know them because they are wearing lavender stoles around their neck. You can also send prayer requests at any time through our website. And our spiritual focus this week is the power of God is within me. Can we say that together again? The power of God is within me. And the ushers will receive your card with your offering toward the end of the music. And now it's time for our prosperity celebration for credit card donations, and uh, there are envelopes and clipboards on the seat pockets in front of you in the sanctuary. And for those at home, all you do is click that donate button on the Watch Live page. And so our lesson today, one of the great teachings of truth, is the awareness that God is the source of all our good. And it says, every blessing that fills our lives is the expression of the goodness and the love of the divine. As we focus upon God as the source of our good and the source of all good, we open to receive ever-expanding abundance. Yay. So I invite you to take your tithe, your love offering in your hand, and be aware that God is the source of all of your good and repeat our affirmation with me together. Divine love, through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. Brothers, do you know what shining on means? Well, you should. <laughs> Sisters, you got to take that phrase and make that phrase all your own for your own good. Shine it on means when depression comes upon you, does a downer number on you. Take no notice, shine it on. Yeah. Drizzy day comes your way, shine it on. Morning blues brings the blues. Shine it on. Shine it on. Just dismiss it, boo and hiss it. Crack it and parenthesis it. Just sit back and shine it on. Shine it on. Shine it on. Shine it on. Though you spent next month's rent, shine it on. Shine it on. Bank book shows only O's. Shine it on. Shine it on. Don't outguess it, just finesse it. If you really want to dispossess it, just set back and shine it on. 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 Turn your back, friends attack. Shine it on. Shine it on. Don't indulge, still you bulge. Shine it on. Don't deplore it, just ignore it. If you really want to out the door it, just sit back and shine it on. 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 You bet your money on a losing team. Shine it on. You buy the Halston and you split a seat. Shine it on. You 
you ride the freeway and you get a flat shine it on he drew four aces while you sat pat shine it on your perfect husband is a perfect jerk he dates a girlfriend while you're at work the dumb computer turns the power off and that cough sir won't take care of your cough no no just shine of fixation if you run a really amelioration what you spot that's fine of the porky pine just wrap it off and shine 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 it shine it on the love and the light and the peace in the earth right now. So let it shine and have fun.